feel of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ben, it's an absolute displeasure to see me standing. <laughs> well, it's absolute... I will get to my question, however. Thank you for coming uh, anyway. My displeasure. Now, I'll repeat the, the question that I, I sought to ask you. Um, you have recently been discussing a lot about the history uh, of the occupation of Palestine. I will call it that. I know you will oppose that, but I will call it that. The occupation of Palestine. The whole thing, right? Just to be clear? The entirety of Palestine. Thank you. You okay. may accuse me of genocide if you wish. That is not my position. Sure. But... And I will, but go ahead. <laughs> anyway, so the, the point about the occupation of Palestine, you have released multiple videos. You have uh, essentially made, it, made yourself the cheerleader of Israel in a lot of sort of Western media spaces. So I watched some of your videos about the conflict and I found uh, a number of inaccuracies. First of all, you describe in 1920, you refer to Jordan as part of Palestine historically. That has never been the case. There has never been a state of Jordan. British mandate Palestine, yes. That is still not the case. Jordan has never been part or considered part of Palestine. The only, part, only time that Jordan has been considered adjacent to Palestine is part of sort of biblical mythology where Transjordan was a reason. That's wildly inaccurate. The that British, man, the British mandate was had a mandate over Please, all of Palestine continue, and then me. they separated off Transjordan and handed it to ben, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. You will get your chance to reply, let me finish. Now, my second point, my second point, the second point that you have phrased constantly and consistently, and it's quite a popular Zionist talking point, is the fact that the Arabs have rejected peace every time it was offered to them. Now, I would like, of course, there's been multiple times where peace has been offered, so let's discuss some of them. The Peel Commission. The Peel Commission entailed expelling multiple Arab families and multiple Arab communities, largely agrarian, from the land in order to create a Jewish state under a colonial authority. Now, I understand, of course, you are a Zionist, so you believe that's desirable. But for the Palestinian farmers, I can imagine they would not have enjoyed that. Number two, you mention that the, um, um, what's it called, that after 1948, the Arabs had the chance to negotiate and make peace with Israel. Apart from the fact that in 1956, Israel invaded the Sinai in Egypt, unprovoked, purely due to the fact that President Nasser nationalized the Suez Canal. Then you claim that the 1967 war was a war of extermination. But if you will read any trusted and respected historian over the 1967 war, and perhaps you may even decide to read some of the books of Moshe Dayan about the actual conflict, where he describes that Israel actually provoked the conflict and there was no chance of the extermination of Israel. Then you claim that the 1973 war was a war of the destruction of Israel once again, which it was not. It was actually the reclaiming of the Sinai and uh, the Golan Heights, which Israel has illegally occupied. So. You have lied multiple times. I can continue if you would wish, but I would like to ask you the question. When you lie, do you feel shame? Okay, so. In order for me to feel shame, I would have to be lying as opposed to you just being wrong about all of these things which you are. So let me start from the very beginning of what you said. Let's try to go through the calendar. British Mandate Palestine was ruled by the British. They carved off Transjordan in 1920, and Transjordan was made into Transjordan with a Hashemite kingdom, which, by the way, is not domestic to the actual Arab Jordan. So if you're talking about a colonial outpost, Jordan would be it, since the Hashemite kingdom has nothing to do with the actual Palestinian Arabs who are living in Transjordan. If you're talking about the Peel Commission, if the idea is that there would have to be a separation of populations in order to effectuate a two-state solution, which you deny, then I was right. Of course, there was a deal on the table. The Jews accepted it. The Arabs rejected it. So you did not actually David undermine my case. In his diary, should be no deal in David the first place. in his diary states. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Commission. I, I listened to your whole bullshit history for like five minutes here. So at least let me respond to it. Your entire claim is that the Arabs did not reject peace, and then in your own disquisition, you admitted that the Arabs rejected the Peel Commission plan, which was a separation between the Jews and the Arabs, which gave an extraordinary amount of land to the Arabs. The Arabs then rejected the peace partition plan proposed by the United Nations in 1947. They then proceeded to reject the Oslo Accords in 93. After that, they rejected the Y River Accords in 98. They rejected Ehud Barak's very generous offer in 2000. They rejected Hul Umert's very generous offer in 2008. 
every single peace deal that has been proposed by Israel or anyone else has been rejected by the Arabs for a very simple reason, which was the very first question I asked you. You do not accept that there should be a Jewish state anywhere in this region. So as long as that's the case, there's literally nothing to argue about. You cannot simultaneously maintain the position. There should not be a Jewish state anywhere in the region. And then tell me that I'm wrong when I say that the Arabs will not accept a two-state solution. You yourself say that there should not be a two-state solution. So the, fir the first point that you, the, I'll firstly address the last point that you made about the um, Palestine and whether there should be a Jewish state. Um, the point you are making there is you're suggesting that the Arabs will not, will not accept a Jewish state. Well, the reason that the Arabs would not accept the Jewish state is multifaceted. Ah, it's complex. Let me finish. So, the reason that it's multifaceted is due to a variety of dynamics. The Zionist movement arrived as a settler colonial project, and it is described as that. You can read the books of J Jabrinsky. You can read Zionist literature from the early 20th century. It states that it was a colonial project. Now, let's address the lies that you mentioned. Let's address the refutation that you made. In 1937, the Peel Commission, if you read the diaries of David Ben-Gurion, he explicitly states that the partition, sorry, thank you, that the partition was a temporary move to ensure the conquest of the full land. In 1948, there had already been an intercommunal civil war in Palestine, which had seen Jewish defense forces versus the Arab forces. There was already a conflict that preceded 1948. To claim that the Arabs simply rejected the UN partition plan is once again a historical. You then make they literally rejected it. How could it be ahistorical if they literally rejected it? If there was a war beforehand, and I get, if there again, was a war once beforehand, again, you just reject fundamentally the existence of the state of Israel, period. When so I how attempted can to interrupt you, I was told to silence. So I would ask you again, please shut up. My point now, I would like to continue. I would like to continue. And you then mention the, uh, what was the peace plan you mentioned after? I, I okay, which one should we do? Should uh, we do the, should we do well, the? Well, we, we finished 1948, what after? Okay, so there was the 2000 peace plan from Ehud Barak, okay. there was the 2008 peace plan from Ehud Olmer, there was the pullout of Israel okay. from Gaza Strip in 2005, okay. handing it over to Hamas. Wait, let's get the next person up now. I All right, um, thank you very much.